and that they were unable to process the data until now because of the government shutdown. Um, I expect the high-rise image to show a fuzzy ball of light uh, like the Hubble image did, uh, but I hope to be surprised. And I must say that I was not surprised. This was exactly what we heard. And uh, in particular, um, there were a number of images obtained by various uh, missions, uh, NASA missions, uh, and the collection of images presented, uh, as well as uh, some spectroscopic data, include fuzzy images uh, that do not add much uh, insight to uh, the properties of Three Atlas. Uh, uh, they um, marginally, they have some marginally new information, uh, but they don't address the anomalies, the 12 anomalies that I pointed out. And there was no mention uh, of the primary puzzles that are associated with Tri Atlas, uh, including the, the two most important ones, uh, the mass being orders of magnitude larger than the previous two interstellar objects. Uh, based on the size estimate we have, the diameter is um, so much larger that uh, the mass is a million times more than the first interstellar object, Oumuamua, and a thousand times more than the second, to Iborisov. And given, given the limited uh, reservoir of material in interstellar space, uh, why have we not seen a million Oumuamuas or a thousand Borisovs before seeing three I Atlas? Uh, that's an, an important question that they don't even mention. Uh, also, the alignment of its trajectory with the plane of the planets around the sun. You might say that's a rare coincidence, uh, but that's what made it an easy target for so many NASA observatories, and they should have acknowledged the coincidence, the unusual, the puzzling fact. The point is that they are driven by the desire to say, you know, it, it's a rare object, but it's pretty much similar to objects we know about. There is nothing really surprising. And what I would like them to, to say is a, a completely different thing. I want them to say, well, we know about uh, comets in the solar system, but this one has a number of puzzling properties. And that's what makes it a very interesting subject for uh, future research for us to figure out those things because we don't understand them. Why is it so difficult for scientists to say there are things we don't understand? They just want to pretend that it's similar to what we've seen before rather than emphasize what we don't understand. There was um, an anti-tail in July and August, and then the claim was that we see the development of a tail uh, just for a brief period of time during September. And then in October, we couldn't look at it. And after it passed uh, close to the sun, we now see both an anti-tail and a tail. Now, the tail is obviously the result of any material being swept up by either the solar radiation or uh, the solar wind. And there are arguments that maybe this is an ion tail. In other words, that this is gas that we that is swept up. I don't have an issue with whether it's what it is, gas or dust, it doesn't really matter. But but the, the understanding of the anti-tail towards the sun, the fact that the jet, I mean, there was one amateur astronomer that uh, noticed, uh, I mean, imaged it, and you could see it going a million kilometers away from the object. Uh, and so there are these jets, and there were seven of them in one of the images. And um, what is strange about the jets is that they are tightly collimated, and the object is supposed to rotate every 16 hours. So then the question is, why isn't that rotation smearing the jets? You would expect the jet to be sort of uh, wiggly, uh, where it points in different directions at different times because of the rotation of the object. We don't see that. Again, a puzzle needs to be explained. I'm not saying that necessarily demonstrates that we're dealing with thrusters that are technological or anything like that. I'm just saying there are aspects of this object that are puzzling. And why not be curious about the puzzles rather than uh, be arrogant about our expertise in recognizing comets, you know, which is, you know, it's the opposite of what the public really wants to hear. Whether the government has uh, important information that the public doesn't know about. And if it does, my sense is that we will get closer. This, this, this coming months, uh, you know, there, there is a good chance we will get closer to learning more about it. Um, but there is also the possibility that 
there is not much there. That in fact, uh, uh, the the material retrieved from crash sites uh, is related to crash sites of uh, you know uh, technologies produced by adversarial nations, and 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 that's uh, so, so. There was a cover story invented by the intelligence agencies relating to that as uh, alien uh, technology, just to um, you know hide the fact that we know much more about uh, adversarial nations than than we want them to, to realize. So the question is whether it's a cover story for just uh, human-made technologies produced by other nations, or we actually have recovered uh, craft that were produced by alien technology from outside the solar system. And I don't know the answer to that because I, ha I haven't had access to any such data. If it exists, I think we will get to it. Uh, it would be impossible. Um, to hide it forever um, and eventually you know we we will find it we will find materials like that we will find the uh, new objects coming along we would detect interstellar objects that are technological there will be no way it's just like um, the vatican was unable to hide the fact that the earth moves around the sun ultimately it was revealed and the vatican apologized and said that galileo was right in the same fashion i mean it's a delay tactics if they have something and don't want and hide it from the public it's just a delay eventually we will know about it uh, the most accomplished technological civilization um, and it's our duty it's my duty as a scientist to search for that uh, rather than say we know the answer it's very unlikely or uh, there is no point in investing funds and let's just search for microbes uh, i think we should invest similar level of funding in the search for microbes and the search for uh, technological artifacts, but NASA right now is focusing on microbes and dismissing uh, the the importance of searching for technological uh, signatures, um, in, at least in terms of the funding that they allocate to both tasks. I'm suggesting that people who explore objects in the sky should have a training data set that doesn't just include icy rocks, but also includes technological objects because we launch such things and we know about uh, 100 billion stars in the Milky Way galaxy, 10% of them having a, a planet the size of the Earth, roughly the same separation. And therefore it's completely reasonable to search for things that we produce, but also things more advanced than we produce. And if you include that in the training data set of astronomers looking at objects entering the solar system from interstellar space, we might find it. If you just include comets, they will always talk about comets. Before the holidays, we should have a flood of data by then from ground-based telescopes and the Hubble and Webb. So, you know, then we will pretty much know a lot about it. So uh, not much longer to wait for. Will ET phone home? <laughs> In other words, is there intelligence guiding the trajectory of this comet? NASA seems to say no, but I think the final word has yet to be written because this comet looks ordinary, but it's slightly different in terms of its history and trajectory. First of all, it's 7 billion years old, older than the solar system. It's had plenty of time to pick up different kinds of radiation, different kinds of chemicals, and its chemical makeup is slightly different from an ordinary comet. More nickel, more iron than a regular comet. And so we realize that it is a comet, but it's slightly different. And so then the question is, can ET phone home as a consequence? Well, I think it's still too early to show, show because of the fact that it's still in its trajectory around the solar system. But at the present time, it does appear as if it's an ordinary comet, a comet with a long, long history, a history of 7 billion years of going through dust clouds and different kinds of radiation belts. But they say, if it looks like a duck, walks like a duck, <laughs> maybe it is a duck. Well, this is a duck that is rather strange. It has a slightly different chemical composition. Its trajectory is not quite the usual trajectory of a comet and it could be breaking up, we're not sure. And so the final chapter has not yet been written. Now, some people say that maybe 40% chance that it's extraterrestrial and it's guided by alien intelligence. I would put it much lower. I would say that maybe on the order of 1% chance that 
there's an alien intelligence behind it. But so far, we don't see any evidence of that. But the final chapter has yet to be written. We're realizing the fact that the trajectory, uh, we're only midway through the trajectory of the comet, and the final chapter has yet to be written. But so far, we see no evidence of guided intelligence. It comes from a solar system that is much older than our solar system, up to 7 billion years. Our solar system is only 4 to 5 billion years. It's had plenty of time to accumulate different kinds of chemicals that are different, giving a different chemical composition than what we see here on the planet Earth. So in other words, it looks like a duck, and it quacks like a duck. However, the final chapter has not yet been written. And so some people say that, well, maybe the aliens are simply holding off for a while, and then they're going to show fireworks later in the future. That cannot be ruled out totally. You have to have an open mind to expect the unexpected. But sometimes things get uh, catch you off guard. And so here we're looking for a comet. We see comets in the solar system. So naturally, we assume that this is an ordinary comet, but it's not. This is a comet with a different chemical composition, a different history, and as a consequence, you cannot rule out the fact that maybe there's visitation. But at the present time, the evidence seems to indicate that there's no evidence of visitation. That's coming around the bend now, a computer so powerful that it can crack any known digital code. This means the banks, the Federal Reserve, uh, the nuclear codes are all subject to being broken by a quantum computer. Now, we're still uh, years away from that, five, ten years, who knows. But already, the nations of the world have a race, a race to see who can get the first operational quantum computer that would allow you to break any known digital code. And this is sending shivers down the spine of many uh, in artificial intelligence experts. We're not there yet. We have prototypes. However, it is inevitable, we think, that in the coming years, somebody will have the ability to break into any known digital code, and they're not going to tell you. <laughs> they're not going to tell anyone. And so you're never going to know who's the first to achieve break-even uh, with a quantum computer. But we're all trying. IBM, uh, Microsoft, uh, the Chinese, all of them are in this race. And all of them are mum concerning how advanced they are because whoever achieves the ability to break into any known digital code is going to keep it a secret. Think of an atom that spins like a top. You have a North Pole and a South Pole. So two orientations of a spinning top. That's like a computer. A computer is digital. It's either on or off, on or off, like a spinning top. Now, think of a quantum computer that can be up, down, and anything in between. Wow. How much more powerful are you? In principle, you are infinitely more powerful than a digital computer, which is up and down, can only calculate up and down. Because a quantum computer can calculate in any orientation of the atom. And that's what's causing shivers up the spine of the CIA. The CIA has already uh, got the word out that, yes, they're looking into this question. In fact, all the big boys are looking into this. The Chinese, for example, even have claimed to create a quantum computer that is billions of times more powerful than an ordinary computer. However, there's a catch. All the press releases you see so far, uh, they're not reproducible on a large scale. It means that this computer on one calculation is billions of times better and faster than an ordinary computer, but it's not general. So we're not there yet. We do not yet have an all-purpose quantum computer that can compute at will. We're not there yet. But when we're there, watch out. Mm. 
But there's a race, a race to see who can attain this capability. So far, the quantum computers that we have can only do one calculation at a time. I repeat, one calculation at a time. Sure, it could do one calculation billions of times faster than an ordinary computer. But for the next calculation, you have to tear it down, rewire it, put the transistors and the lasers in a different orientation. And that takes hours and hours to do that. We do not yet have an all-purpose quantum computer where you simply give it a question and it simply rewires itself and then gives you the answer. We're not there yet, but watch out because when it does happen, it's a game changer. Now, right now, our most advanced quantum computers, we're only talking about maybe a few hundred a few hundred uh, quantum computers working simultaneously. What you really need is thousands. Once you have thousands of these chips, these quantum chips working simultaneously, then watch out. That's when you have a game changer. We don't know whether or not they're simply rocks from out of space that are whizzing through the solar system. We don't know. AI is a big question mark. Is for good or evil. You realize that any technology is a double-edged sword. Computers, yes, they can do all sorts of things. They can rearrange your bank account. They can do all sorts of wonders with the finance and the stock market, but watch out. They can also be used to break into other people's codes and steal secrets. So any technology is a double-edged sword. The question is, do we have the wisdom, the wisdom and the political savvy to be able to police this, that's the question. It's inevitable that we're gonna have quantum computers that are incredibly fast. The question is, will we have the wisdom to be able to monitor and control 